week. Hey, FYI, I don't know if I've announced this publicly, but the James Dash will be part of the Hidden Cup 4 main event. All right, so we're, we're a couple days away from that. Um, but yeah, I, I can't say hello to everybody, of course. I think we'll get things started here, and Dave and I have a lot to, to break down. Um, it has been a little bit since I've spoken to Dave. Dave joined for the uh, the two deciders, the final deciders, actually, which were epic sets. So, Dave, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. It's a nice day today. I'm feeling good. The vibes are high, and uh, we're here to talk about Hidden Cup 4, which I'm sure everyone is super stoked for next weekend. I've seen so much excitement, Tristan, already. Like, all the other Twitch chats today have been, I thought Hidden Cup started this weekend. When is it starting? When is it starting? <laughs> so I can't wait for next weekend when it finally gets rolling. It's been, uh, doesn't seem like it's been a year, but here we are once again. Yeah, a lot has happened, man. Like, like I think in people's lives, a lot has happened because of COVID. But, like, I, I said to someone the other day, I feel like the last year has gone by extremely slow and yet extremely fast in different ways. Um, with Age of Empires, I feel like the year has gone by extremely fast. There's been so many events, and it's hard to believe that so much has actually changed since Hidden Cup 3, right? Uh, so much has changed, and so much has stayed the same as well. Um, most of our players from Hidden Cup 3 are the same this time around, except True. there's a few extras in here, which should make it pretty exciting uh, as far as the mix-up goes, I know Vinchester and Barls have never been in a Hidden Cup before, and we're going to see them this time around, which is pretty fun if we're thinking about uh, changes to the pro scene here. Yeah, man. Well, um, this is how it's going to work, everyone who's watching. Obviously, this is all going to be on YouTube, so we're going to start off with some structure here. But you can see the topic we're currently on on screen, and you can see the topics that we're going to discuss on screen. I have a few scenes for this, too, but it should be pretty simple. Um, so I'm going to have this quick, awkward pause, <laughs> and then we're going to start it off. That way YouTube thinks that this was made just for them. <laughs> All right, ladies and gents, welcome to the Hidden Cup 4 talk show. Hidden Cup 4 is coming March 18th through the 21st. Every single day we will start at 14 GMT, which is 10 a.m. Eastern. There's been very long days in the past. There's been like 8 to 12 hour days. Um, all the games are going to go down. 16 best players in the world. The main event prize pool is rising due to the support here uh, on Twitch, and I'll have more information about that. But I want to start off here before we bring Dave into the picture and just go through a few basics on how it works because there's so many new people and many people are asking about how it works. Like people are, there's so many tinfoil hatters out there that are trying to say like, oh, this person could do this, blah, 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 blah. And so uh, let's break it down. So Hidden Cup 4, 16 best players, like I said, they all play on hero names, which we will get to in a second. I am not involved in any of the process. It is all one person that is Robo. Robo creates the accounts. He creates the passwords. And before we did the random drawing on screen, he sent them all their information. And then Robo communicates to the players through those accounts. And he is the mediator for scheduling. So let's say it's like Viper and Leary round one, which is possible in Hidden Cup. <laughs> um, you know, Viper and Leary never communicate to each other. They say, hey, these, this is the timeline of when I can play. And Robo just says, hey, you show up here, you play your games, right? Um, so that's how that works. And then when it comes to the games themselves, people have always been asking, what about pings? What about servers? There's got to be some way to guess. That is true, but it is much more difficult to guess with servers based on player feedback in Hidden Cup 3, for example. There were four players who made it to the semifinals. After they finished the games, three people said they were playing Hera. Uh, and the only person who didn't say he was playing Hera was Hera himself. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think uh, we had Dogao, Viper. Uh, we, it just, it, servers make it complicated, Dave. So there's definitely, like, ping it, to the server is a thing, but Robo ends up choosing a neutral server that they have to play on, and it's, uh, there's some clues out there, Dave, but it's still kind of tough for them. Um, and, and that's pretty much it, man. And then we, we have those games over four days, and... The beauty of it is that round one is probably already completed behind the scenes. Round two is probably may, possibly happening now over the next couple of days. And then uh, we will have the semifinals played behind the scenes as well, but streamed as Rex like everything else on the final day. And then the grand final is the only thing that's live, which basically means in the final day, you don't have one person playing a best of seven semi and then moving on to the final. That's pretty much it. Um, 
And so now we're going to move along, Dave, to kind of a fun little portion. And this is where the talk show actually begins. Hopefully the information there helped with uh, any questions people had about how it works. But we've got the bracket, which I did live, uh, is on YouTube now. And this is all random. But we've got some pretty crazy matchups. Uh, Dave, do you have a hero in particular that you're rooting for this year? Because I remember last year, your hero did all right. I don't even remember who my hero was. I think last it was King year. Sancho. <laughs> oh, King Sancho. That's right. I believed in my boy Sancho because he was done dirty in the campaigns. But this time around, I think, you know, we're in 2021. Modern problems require modern solutions, T90. And I am a huge fan of Cobra Car. <laughs> I think we need to bring more vehicles into the pro scene of Age of Empires 2. And I actually suggested Cobra Car as a name in the thread when they started it on AOE Zone. And Robo, of all people, reacted to my suggestion with an angry face. <laughs> so, so wait a second. That's funny because it was, it was at one point my idea. I was like, you know what? It'd be kind of funny to have one cheat code and let the community vote on it. And Robo didn't have too much pushback there. So I guess he just accepted it, man. Um, all right. So you're all over Cobra Car. I mean, that's a freaking cheat code. But it has been very popular, and it, it would be kind of funny to see Cobra Car like, go towards the finals. Uh, we, of course, have no clue who is, um, we have no clue who the players are, but I'm all in on Little John for the exact opposite reason. Um, it's not a strong unit. <laughs> I think it's got seven base attack. It's actually a bit stronger than a traditional Spearman, but um, kind of a weak unit. I feel like that's the guy that got picked last in gym class. Uh, and I'm hoping for a real underdog story. It would be funny if maybe in the semifinals there, it's Little John up against Cobra Car later on. Uh, but I actually asked Nilly, like everyone who's going to be casting with me, I asked uh, to, to choose a hero to root for. Nilly's response was hilarious. So I, I said, Nilly, who are you rooting for and why? And let me see if I could pull up his response. He said, I'm cheering for John the Fearless because it's ironic that his name in, that with his name in picture... He looks like he is sad because someone spilled his coffee, but he is sh too shy to tell them. <laughs> um, so interesting thinking there from Nilly. Uh, I guess he doesn't think that John the Fearless is truly fearless. And um, yeah, Dave, I I'm sure I think Jacqueline is who Dash is rooting for, and I didn't hear back from Slam yet, but we've got a cool lineup. Um, do you, do you have a favorite in the, in the top side of the bracket? Cause I I've got Cobra car in the bottom, Okay, true. which is kind of like, this is the logic here. Cobra car is Mr. Steal your girl. All right. That that's Cobra car. He rolls up, he steals your girl. He, he, he leaves. But in the top side of the bracket, we got Pope Leo one, which is Mr. Heal your girl. <laughs> so that's my, that's my theory. Okay. So I did a little bit of research. I have to do more before the main event. But Pope Leo, if you look it up, he actually convinced Attila the Hun to turn away and not ransack his people. Like, again, not knowing the specifics, and Chad knows that I did suck you, with did, history. Did, did you, wait a second, did you, did you look that up in the campaigns? No, like or that like... happened according to Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> so, so according to Wikipedia... That is, I think it's rumored that that happened. So that's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, you know what? I, I don't know, Dave. I, didn't, I wasn't prepared for this question. You know what, Sinjata? Amazing unit, uh, which you guys will see in the Hero Showdown video. Pretty cool storyline. So maybe if I had to pick someone at the top, I'd, I'd choose Sinjata. But um, I'm not going to be hurt if Sinjata loses to Pope Leo or, uh, sorry, Harald. Her 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 yeah, um, I'm all in Little John. And I know that viewers out there are rooting for Little John as well, so I'm happy with that at least. So, moving on. Because <laughs> there's not much else to talk about with the bracket, Dave. Let's talk about the maps and settings. So, this year, very different compared to previous years. Um, and also, Overlay Guy, if you're out there, he asked me to prompt him to change this on screen. So, considering we're on the third topic and the first topic is lit up, this is my very obvious prompt you to possibly change some things here but um there were seven maps in the qualifier in previous hidden cups you saw it kind of all the maps dave in the qualifier which made it less difficult to surprise people in the main event how do you think 
having five additional maps that have not been seen in super competitive settings is going to change this hidden cup. I think that it's fantastic. And we'll see the meta develop, I'm sure, um, over the tournament. And I know it's the finals and semifinals that are being played on the final weekend, correct? Yep. Or is it just the finals? Okay. So semifinals and finals, once players have seen uh, the recorded games previous from the previous rounds, maybe we'll see some meta adaptation. But in the beginning rounds, we're going to see strategies that uh, players have come up with themselves, which yeah. is always super exciting to me. Um, and especially with some of the maps like, you know, Mudflow, Quarry, Bypass, maybe gives an advantage to players like Tato or Doubt who can work together to come up with those new, um, the new meta on those maps, or maybe players like Viper with unorthodox Civ strategies. Yeah. It'll be really, really fun for me. Um, and I hope that players take advantage when they're map drafting, when they're picking the new maps. I really hope players take advantage of the, of the new stuff. I, I think... I think they are. Like, being friends with most high-level players on Steam, I've been doing a ton of off-stream work this week, which requires me to go into the game, right? And most of these guys are online. <laughs> so uh, you go to their profiles in AW2.net, unless they had an oopsie, which most of them don't, there's no activity there. All their games are private. They're probably in Discord calls with their teammates, and they're probably practicing things. And so we saw that with Cup and Hidden Cup 3, which produced some incredible games with who ended up being Tato and Doubt. Um, and I think that if you look at Tato and Doubt's performances in Hidden Cup 3, you could probably directly tie that back to their preparation. And there's just a lot of different players motivated for different reasons right now. And whether that's they're an extreme underdog or whether they haven't yet been able to, to show their full potential. So like I, the crazy thing is, Dave, we use Bypass as an example. I'm sure some people have maybe seen some videos with Bypass. There's been a few games played, uh, from, from some players out there, but like, I don't even know where to start when it comes to the Civ drafting process, to be honest with you, because you could, that map is so ridiculous that you could go into that thinking it's going to be similar to Hideout, and someone could easily flip the script on you. Um, I, I'm i just excited. I'm excited for, for the reason that every single game could be different on that map until maybe we get to the semis and the finals, and like you said, players learned. I think it's interesting as well with two new sieves in the mix from the last Hidden Cup. Now, Burgundians and Sicilians have been getting a lot of, uh, I won't say hate, but they've ever since they were adjusted, mm -hmm. I think um, they've been underperforming for where they should be. And I'll be interested to see whether any of the players actually pick those two civilizations uh, with these new maps and go for some sort of unorthodox uh, strategy. Yeah, and that also would maybe give us some guesses when we're trying to guess who the players are. Like, like Vinchester, I think, was the only one to pick Sicilians in the entire qualifier. <laughs> um, he didn't win with them, but he chose them. I, I know that in ranked games, Doubt has been giving them a try. But yeah, that, makes, that definitely changes things. But this Hidden Cup not having free pick of Civs changes things more than anything because we're not going to see any mirror matchups. And when we're talking best of fives, you're going to see like 12 or so sieves on your screen. It, it changes the way the game is played. Uh, and I think that it's just going to introduce variety that, that's going to make Hidden Cup even better than it was previously. Mm -hmm. So fun fact for you, Dave. Um, Lithuanians existed last year. <laughs> and you know how strong Lithuanians are now? We're like, you start with 150 food. You, you send all your villagers to wood at the start. You get the dock up early or like that insta drush. You weren't seeing that last year. And like that just dawned on me. And there's a few other civilizations which are currently strong that people weren't really experimenting with back then. Like I'm wondering just how much room is there to grow and to expand with all these civilizations, especially with two new ones. Players get really stuck in the meta sometimes. And this might reward people who have branched out ahead of time. Well, this is how we find out how good civs actually are, right? We find out in tournaments, and then that slowly filters down to the ladder a lot of the time. So we're going to you know, answer that question. How good are some of these civs yep. uh, in the main event? And that's part of the joy of watching Age of Empires 2, especially with a format like Hidden Cup. You think you know what's happening, and then you just get thrown a curveball. Like, remember in uh, Hidden Cup 3 last year, the matches on Cup? 
I think it was Tato and Doubt, where they would go forward and wall the docks and have a drush behind it yep. with Celts. Like, that's that's a really insane strategy when you're thinking about it. But it worked, and it worked multiple times. And uh, they're just proving that the meta can be adapted. It can be adjusted if you use your brain um, and if you use the preconceived notions of your opponent, what they think is going to happen against them. That's the big one. That's the big one because the meta is so established in so many situations. You know what civilizations are probably going to be prioritized. If you can, even just to simplify it from a Civ draft standpoint, or let's say let's use Chinese as, as an example. Chinese have been picked a lot very early on in drafts for Arabia, and they've been dominating. If you are able to think of something that breaks that, not saying that's easy to do, not saying this is even the best example, but if you have like a, a Civ 6 or six, Civ 7 pick, that breaks one of those first early picks, that's like a win and a half kind of in a Civ draft scenario because you you beat one of their better civilizations and then in theory you have some of your other civilizations saved up. So yes, I really think when the Civ drafts come out and with these maps, like we're just going to be like, whoa, this is some crazy preparation from a few of them. And, and there's also players that might not even go into it with preparation, which we'll get to, which uh, might help or hurt with the guessing process. And I think the Civ, like Civ balance currently is probably at one of the best points it's ever been. Yeah. I know there people always will complain because, you know, me and you, we complain, the players complain, the chat complains about Civs being broken or underpowered or whatnot. But I think every Civ has a certain area in which, it, which it's viable. And previously in Hidden Cups, notably Hidden Cup 1 and 2, when we had a very defined meta, we could kind of tell who players were based on what civs they were picking uh for what maps and this time around i think it's going to be a lot more difficult for us yeah because i think players are going you know they have so many options now they're going to go for the ones that we're not expecting and maybe we're going to be saying oh look it's probably tato in this set when it's <laughs> actually dogao yeah yeah dude i i go into this hidden cup Having spent a great deal of time looking back through Hidden Cup 1, 2, and 3, because I'm making a top 10 video, which will be up in 24 hours, by the way, everyone. But, like, I go into this Hidden Cup just telling myself, don't even try and guess who is who, because you're so wrong every time. <laughs> there's every Hidden Cup, there's always been one. Most of them I get right, but then I just get real stuck on, like, one particular thing. I'm like, this has to be this person. And um, I think it's going to confuse people so much more now that the maps are new, like, we'll use a meta player as an example. Like, use Hera as an example. We can't even, Hera didn't play in the qualifier, and we have not seen Hera play on any of these five new maps. So how can we even judge now, like, what the meta is and, and how someone's going to play a situation? I think it's going to be more difficult to guess for opponents, but also for, for casters and viewers than ever. We're still going to do it. I, I like yep. every single hidden cup. It's the same thing, Tristan. Like after the event, I'm looking back at the games and going, why did I say that this player was 100% Tato 15 times during the set? <laughs> like why? <laughs> like I just got to say it once or twice, you know, and then leave it. Just, yeah. just leave it. Yeah, it's it's a rough one, dude. <laughs> it's a rough one Um, because it makes you feel good, too. Like for viewers, you guys say it and you have thousands of people in chat. So you have no one holding you accountable. But when you really feel like you're going to guess correctly and you just stick to it, you're like, yeah, I'm going to look so good at the end. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't always prove to be the case. Um, but yeah, we have we have a lot of players to talk about, Dave. Um, and I'm curious in your thoughts here. We have 16 names. I'm just going to show the names to the viewers here. Of course, eight of them had to qualify and eight uh, were the top eight from Hidden Cup 3. Top eight from Hidden Cup 3. The Viper, Hera, Tato, Dogal, Leary, Doubt, Yo, and MBL. And then the qualifying players, we have Jordan, Velez, Vact, Barles, ACCM, Vibi, Nikov, and Vinchester. And uh, I think you alluded to it before we started the official talk show, Dave, but thoughts on the qualified players? They had to go, they had to run the gauntlet to get here, first of all. The qualifiers... That is some of like the highest quality Age of Empires 2 I've ever seen. Yeah. Going through those. And Check. there was players, players like Classic Pro. Where did he come from? <laughs> like what? <laughs> He's making it through, almost made it through the qualifiers, almost beat Veles, takes down Zupi 3-0. 
And all of these guys who qualified had to go through multiple players of his caliber yeah. to get here. And they deserve to be here 100%. I'm looking at that list, and it just looks stacked to me. I'm seeing people like Nikov going through the qualifiers. ACCM, who's made a case for himself as the best Vietnamese player over the last year and a half, two years, going through the qualifiers. Bact is there, another great Vietnamese player. Vivi had to go through qualifiers. Vinchester, who's had an amazing 2020 and 2021. It's, it's really, really exciting to me. And it's exciting how the pro player scene in general is getting closer and closer ever since DE came out. Like we used to have those top eight invited players to every tournament. Pretty much guarantee it's going to be one of those who wins. But now looking at this list, I could make a case for a bunch of those players making it to the semifinals. And and I think the last big tournament we kind of saw that, Dave. It was different settings. So take it with a grain of salt, but it was the Red Bull Wolo tournament with Empire Wars. And we saw names break into the semis that we would have never seen in semis a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. um, since since it's just you and I for the talk show, uh, I did want to get some thoughts from others, and I messaged Nilly and said, just give me your thoughts. And he says, Hidden Cup 4 will be different because the top is closer than ever before, and the midfield, as he called it, is stronger, which I think is a great way to explain it. Like, you no longer... I mean, we'll talk about our predictions and who we think is going to win and all that in a second, but it's no longer just Viper in that going-to-win conversation. It's Viper... And then a few other names that come to mind. And then as far as the, the competition elsewhere goes, it's, uh, it's ridiculously tight. And I think what's, what's so difficult about Age of Empires is how you could not even just lose a game now, Dave, with one poor decision, one lack of a quick wall, one, if you're Nikov, lack of an eco upgrade or something. It's like you could lose the whole series because it's that tight. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous how perfect you have to be. Yeah, and, you know, the basic idea behind hidden cup tristan and i know we we don't really want to like admit this but the birth of hidden cup was because viper was winning everything and we thought that there was a serious effect of players coming up against viper yep. and uh not being able to perform to their level so we created or you created sorry but you created a tournament that hides players' identities to give other players an advantage. Now, the last year with Viper first losing to Yo and then kind of the floodgates gates opening of players being able to beat Viper on a relatively consistent basis, does that narrative kind of flip now? Where players don't know whether they're up against Viper and Viper can play to his full potential without being, you know, out Civ drafted by Yo or have tailored strategies from other players that they know work against him does does it improve his chances now to have a hidden cup format i think i think what we're gonna get down to the nitty-gritty here folks <laughs> um i think viper comes into this hidden cup having heard and seen all the conversation over the last year after hidden cup three remember he completely destroyed in Hidden Cup 3. It was not even close. Those finals, like, the level he, of execution was disgusting. <laughs> he right? apologized for 4 0 -ing He <laughs> He won the tournament and apologized that it was too short. Like, and, and this is, like, this was five straight years, right? Now, the difference was we didn't have consistent tournaments. It was, like, one tournament was relatively large every couple months. DE comes out, and it's, like, tournament, 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 tournament. Viper loses a $200 tournament he's just playing for fun and would never prepare for. And people were like, oh, my God, you know, because it was so different to not see Viper winning all the time. And so I think for Viper, like, he honestly, as a human being, had to prioritize. Like, I want to win majors is probably his outlook. Mm -hmm. And if you look at majors, you're probably talking Hidden Cup. You're probably talking King of the Desert and then Red Bull, Wallalo, and, of course, no lands right now, but maybe those NAC events. And... NAC, Viper was always winning. King of the Desert, he was always winning. He didn't win King of the Desert 3, which was a shock. And then Red Bull, Wololo, he also wasn't... He, he has not performed as, as well as he would have wanted, Dave. But, like, back to my point. Yes, it's a little bit shaky, but that's based on Viper's very high standards of straight-up winning everything for half a decade. I think that he comes into this motivated to prepare a ton and show everyone, like, you, you got to give me the respect I deserve, <laughs> you know? Um, 
So Viper comes in here as the favorite for me, but it's no longer just the Viper. I think that uh, that Leary's shown how strong he is in the last two big events. You had uh, Red Bull Wololo winning a final, losing in the finals, and then in King of the Desert winning there. Um, I guess I'm rambling a little bit, Dave, but uh, let's just finish up on uh, on Viper. Like, Is there any other aspect that I missed out on bringing up with him? I think this being a mixed back tournament mm. uh, with standard settings, not Empire Wars, really benefits him because I still think he's the strongest overall player. In I agree. The game. Yeah, and I, I think if you're even if you're looking at like 2020, it, he still had the best record of any player in terms of tournament results. And there, yep. there's like if you're saying that he's not the best anymore, you have to make an argument for someone else, and I don't think the there argument is no there. There's no one. Yeah. Yeah. Like the only argument that could really be made. It, realistically, based on results without bias, is probably Leary because he won King of the Desert. Like the last six months, he he was winning big tournaments. But Hera is definitely he's definitely in my eyes a top five player. But uh, and we've even joked with him about it. I've won more ten thousand dollar tournaments than Hera over the last twelve months. <laughs> it like it's he he got second place in a bunch of them. But the reality is he hasn't yet won them. Of course, only, he's way better. So. I, I just have – only because I wasn't invited. I just have to. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was Battle Royale, and they knew that Dave would, would dominate everyone. That's probably what it was. 17th most influential Age of Empires streamer, though. I missed it by one. Damn. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I mean, Yo, it's real weird the way the food, train work, uh, food chain works because Yo, I'd say, has performed pretty well against Viper. Um, but he still lost to the Viper in – the last hidden cup 3-1 so yeah viper is my favorite david and let's talk about leary what do you think about his game right now compared to you let's say two or three years ago and uh what are your expectations for leary of course with it being random seeding in this tournament well he's really he's really ironed out um i won't say flaws but the holes in his game right mm -hmm. yeah like we used to say back in 2018 or whatever you know Leary's on his game when he's gathering relics or when he's exploring the rest of the map. Yeah. And uh, thinking about, you know, 10 minutes in the future rather than just the here and now, which he really got focused on um, previous in the past. And he would kind of, like, just try and snowball his way to victory, use his superior micro, use his superior APM to bully players out of a game. Whereas now he's kind of meshing that all together, right? He's taking map control. He's getting stuff like relics. He's exploring the corners of the map, taking the extra resources. Yep. And his transitions are so, so smooth. Very, very tough player to stop. I'm really excited to see him on the new maps because I think Leary is one of those players, you know, you have different styles. You have players like Tato or like Viper or like Doubt who kind of drive the meta. And then you have players like Leary or Hera perfect the meta and i think leary is really one of the best at doing that new maps mm. maybe he's gonna struggle a little bit yeah like you're you're spot on with that and that's you know what i won't even say what i'm gonna say because thinking about it you, you touched on all the points dave it's like if there's a meta that's solved leary is probably going to be your favorite you look at um king of the desert it's the most popular age of empires map ever Arabia and it's you know the civilizations are understood because everyone just plays ranked Arabia all the time so he went into king of the desert and he he proved that you know beating some big names and then winning that he is the best in those settings but that's one map it's a map that's understood this hidden cup is going to be even more difficult for Leary possibly if he doesn't get his preparation right because there's new and mixed maps too and we actually saw that Leary he lost in the quarterfinals to Tato um, and it was 3-2, and the one game which probably decided it all, the one thing that was uh, kind of a, a big shocker for us, Dave, was that cup strategy that Tato had prepared. And like, he had this strategy prepared. Leary had probably never seen it before, and he loses that game, and maybe that decided that best of five. So, like, yeah, I'm. it's an interesting one with Leary. He's definitely one of the favorites, but let's hope that he's preparing behind the scenes and is ready for what might be coming his way. It's funny because all of these discussions right now comes comes back to the the new maps like with Viper, with Leary, with Tato, 
uh, with a player like Mr. Yo or, or mm -hmm. MBL or whatever, every single player we're going to discuss here, I'm going to come back to these new maps being in the pool. That's how yep. big of an impact they're going to have here. Or that's how big of an impact I think they're going to have. Maybe players are going to go <laughs> for the standard <laughs> ones. We never really know, right? Yeah. Well, they are, I will say they are forced for the semis in the finals. So like worst case scenario, if, if they never pick the new maps, which I don't think will happen, I think some will avoid them, some won't. But um, the game four and game seven, just like in previous Hidden Cups, are set with, uh, I think the semis, game four is always bypass, and then game seven is always mud flow, something like that. But um, yeah, we'll see him a little bit at least, Dave. And we actually went into this. Chad, I actually told Dave, like, hey, here's the structure. We're each going to talk about three players. <laughs> You three. knew that wasn't gonna happen. It's Come not. On. It's not enough. I, I. I can't just do three players. So let's just continue doing what we're doing. Screw it. Um. So you. We talked about Viper. We talked about Leary. Uh, let's talk about uh, Hera, uh, who we did touch on a bit. How motivated do you think he's gonna be to finally to get a major win? Well, the thing with Hera is he's aiming for anything above second place at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and true. there's only one spot above second. Uh, I think Hera really, really wants the victory. Yeah. I think that it'd be hard to find a player here more motivated than him. He had a really good 2020, but he just couldn't quite pull it out. Yep. Um, I'm looking on the list of players, and yeah, maybe maybe Viper wants to prove his dominance again. Maybe Leary wants to continue uh, his good results. Maybe Doubt wants to prove that it's not just Empire Wars, but... Out of all the names here, I think the fire is going to be lit under Hera, and I think we're going to see something uh, pretty impressive from him. Hera has shown that he can beat everyone, and usually pretty handsomely, except for Viper and Leary. And with Leary, it's been close. He ran into Leary in King of the Desert, and Leary beat him by a game. And then in Red Bull, it was Leary-Hera again, and that was the crazy set where Hera was up 2-0 in a best of five, and Leary came back to win 3-2. So, like, he... It's random seeding. For all we know, Viper and Leary might be on the other side of the bracket. You know, you, you don't know with Hidden Cup. But I think in an ideal world, if you were to ask Hera, he will want to win Hidden Cup 4 while beating one of those players on the way, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he does not want those players to go down to anyone else but him. That would be a, a, a great showing. And do you think there's something, some weakness to his game that he needs to change? Something he needs to branch out from, possibly, to, to like be better than those two? I I think he just, like, <laughs> okay, so big dick energy. That's what he needs. <laughs> uh, I was trying to find another word for it, but there's not. There's not another word, word for it. Big dick energy. That's what he needs. He just yeah. needs confidence. Just go in, you know? Have, have the confidence to know that you're going to crush your opponent and burn his village. He like, sounds like Hera's going to be Cobra Car, confirmed. <laughs> yeah. Just get, just go go at it, man. Just believe in yourself. You're better than everyone. Okay. That's what you need to be telling yourself constantly. And I think that's what uh, Hera maybe struggles with against Leary or Viper. Uh, you said those are the two two guys that he struggles to get results against. And I think confidence is, is a huge factor for Hera. So obviously players might get a feel for who they're playing for after a game or two. But if, if you're saying that, like I think Hera's going to have confidence that he's better than everyone except the two names we just mentioned, Viper and Leary. So if he goes into a set in Hidden Cup, do you think that that might actually help him? Like mentally, like I'm not up against the guy that beat me last time. You know, I might be up against someone who's, who's way weaker than me. Does that help his mindset? I think the mindset has to be the same. You have no idea who you're playing against. Just same mindset every single time. I'm going to crush this guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it must be a weird experience as a player, right? Like you go into it with that mindset and then... You get destroyed and you're like, oh, God, <laughs> like, who is this person? All right. Well, Dave, move along here. Uh, let's talk about MBL. Now, I'm going to have some information about this during the main event. But I think a lot of people don't realize just how Hidden Cups have gone. Because there's really only been one player who has, has been consistent in a good way in Hidden Cup. And that is the Viper winning every single one. We talked about Yo, we talked about Leary, we talk, we're going to talk about more names, Dave. There has only been one player to make it to two semifinals besides the Viper, and that's MBL. And that was Hidden Cup 1, where he made it all the way to the finals. Hidden Cup 2, where he 
just like Hidden Cup 1, lost to Viper, but in the semifinals. And then Hidden Cup 3 was the only time he did not make it to a semifinal. Hera's only made one semifinal. Um, I don't even remember if Yo made a semifinal. Tata only made one semifinal. Like, the Just consistency has only been Viper and then MBL behind him. <laughs> well, remember, too, Hidden Cup 3, MBL went to five games yeah. on that. And the last game was that crazy long, you know, we're looking at the clock. It's like 10 p.m. for us. <laughs> Insane game on Haido, was it not? Against uh, Dogao. Like, it was really, really close for him making it to uh, to the next round as well. Yeah. So, we mentioned preparation. That is something that has hurt MBL, and I think the level has kind of risen over the last year, and potentially when it comes to mixed map tournaments around him, do you think that that's a weakness of MBL's game, that, that maybe he's not as prepared as others, or maybe is that just like a... Maybe he just doesn't broadcast his level of preparation and, and how he tends to treat tournaments. Uh... I think with MBL, the, the lack of preparation, I, I have kind of the, the same thing for stuff that I do, Tristan, where you use it as like a crutch. Okay. You know, you, you, you say that you're not preparing and like maybe you don't want to prepare because then if you get beaten, that would prove that you're actually not, you know, as good as you think you are. <laughs> so I think, yeah. I think MBL and I are on the same plane with that. <laughs> where We like purposely... Um, don't do that kind of stuff as a as a crutch for our ego, right? I, I, I would that. love to see MBL fully prepare for this tournament. I think he's going to put the time in um, to do it, and I think he is always a danger. If he has confidence, MBL is one of the scariest players to come up against. And you can't if he if he lacks him. confidence, then that's where he runs into some issues. I I agree with you. It's an interesting mindset with MBL. How long have we known him? Like six years? And he's always been saying that he could never be the best. <laughs> he's always just been like, yeah, I'm not that good. And even though he's made it so deep in tournaments, right? I think maybe he just, he's like, well, I'm happy being top five, top five scrub or a top 10 scrub, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know, uh, and I, I don't know this for all the players, of course, but uh, MBL communicated with me a little bit behind the scenes. Not that I'm asking, but I know that the preparation's there. I know that he's with some of his teammates, some of his friends, and they're probably watching each other play. They're probably, you know, uh, doing whatever they can to prepare for this. So do you think MBL gets past the quarterfinals this year? Of course, random seeding, you never know. Do you think he makes it back to the semis? Or do you think maybe new names make it deep into Hidden Cup 4? I think MBL makes it to the semifinals. I, I'm, I've been really impressed with um, MBL's performances since... Uh, King of the Desert and his play style. It's been really nice to see. And I think he's going to... Some of these new maps kind of mold to his play style. If we look at a map like Bypass, yep. I think controlling that middle area um, with all the area behind to boom is, is really nice for a player like MBL. We look at players or maps like Quarry could be really, really good for him. Um, and then there's, of course, stuff like Gold Rush, which he's insane on, and Arabia, we know his caliber there. Is MBL the easiest player to guess in Hidden Cup from a viewer yes. standpoint? Yes. There's not even, it's not even close, is it? <laughs> I, don't, I, I was going to say yes as well. I mean, see, Hidden Cup 3 was a little weird. Hidden Cup 3 was pretty easy for me to guess Hera. Like, it definitely... It didn't feel like Viper. It didn't feel like Leary. It felt like Hera. But I don't think any are quite as easy to pick up on MBL. At least if you get to round two and you get to see like over five games from a player, at that point, there's enough instances where MBL forgets to build houses where he like, you know, he walls a certain way. Maybe we'll have some laming and whatnot, but I do think he's relatively easy to guess. <laughs> relatively easy. <laughs> the easiest, man. Just even the way he like groups his units and controls them is it, to me it's like just a giant flag that says mbl you know flying over his yep. tc at all times you know chad makes an interesting point vivi we might be able to guess with the freaking civ draft <laughs> because i yeah. think well backed now i think backed will know he'll know better now but i think like vivi and maybe yo are the only players that would draft spanish and vivi is notorious for picking Spanish really early. 
And there's not too many high-level players who do that now. So, um, uh, can you hear me, Dave? I just had a weird issue on my end. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe Vivi's easy to guess with the draft. But, yeah, MBL, probably easy to guess. But he's not easy to beat, Dave. And, uh, you know, Hidden Cup 1 and 2, he only lost to the Viper. And he was very close to beating Dogal in Hidden Cup 3, but was just one game off. So, I'm, I'm excited to see. He makes Hidden Cup fun because the games are always entertaining when you watch MBL play. And uh, he, he also has those quirks that make it fun to guess, too. Perfect. What about Vinch, Dave? Can we talk about Vinchester a little bit? Because we, we've been, we were rooting for Vinchester <laughs> for so long. It all started back in 2015. Thoughts on Vinchester making it into his first hidden cup? I'm super excited. If there was, if you would ask me one player to add to hidden cup that hasn't been in a hidden cup before, I think my answer would have been Vinchester before the qualifying rounds. Mm -hmm. He's just, he's upped his level as well in the last year. He was already at a high level to begin with, but I think it's kind of similar to Leary where he's ironed out a lot of the quirks in his game. He doesn't spend as much attention on, you know, two archers. He'll do it from time to time, but he's not microing two units at the expense of his entire economy anymore. Yeah. And he's constantly, he's one of those players, like I said before, drives the meta forward, which as an Age of Empires fan, those are the types of players that you want to see in tournaments. And his level of execution on a map like Islands, I would have never, ever yep. expected from Vinchester. What he was able to do on Islands, I mean, without even talking about some of the other games, was incredible in the qualifier. And I know Slam probably didn't have his best best of seven there, but still, I mean, Vinch is probably, I mean, he's going to be very dangerous. Not that the other eight that qualified aren't dangerous, but uh, I'm excited to see what Vinchester can do. And he's going to be motivated and... Fun little fact for the viewers here. Uh, right after Hidden Cup 3 last year, uh, Robo hosted, I think it was Robo Lidacor. Anyways, there was an event called Visible Cup, <laughs> which was for the players that were not in Hidden Cup. And the finals of Visible Cup was between Vinchester and Barls, Dave. And it ended up that Vinchester and Barls are the two names here in Hidden Cup 4. That I've never played in a hidden cup before. I thought that was pretty cool. That's really appropriate. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very fitting that the winners of Visible Cup um, would go through to the next hidden cup. That's that's kind of interesting, actually. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even know until a Robo brought it up to me last week. Um, and and now let's talk about Jordan. Formerly top five in the world. Many people thought he was number one for a period. I know that he and Viper in 2012-2013 best friends, playing a lot, and probably neck and neck. They had best of 21, which Jordan won 11 to 10. They had, uh, well, before Jordan ended up quitting the game, um, they had like a best of what ended up being a best of 111 or something, <laughs> um, which I think Jordan won by a few games. Um, the point is, is he was gone for a while, Dave. The scene was growing. Uh, the level was upped. And he recently went full time in hopes of, of getting back into the top 10 and he really looks good in these qualifiers, man. And, and you and I had had our conversations about Jordan, the various times he returned. It didn't really feel like we're, we're seeing enough from him, but what do you think about him now? So throughout this whole, like I'll call it a journey of his, the return journey, I would occasionally go to his stream and uh, you know, I'd watch his gameplay and you know, he's got a good position on the ladder or whatever. And you know, you'd watch in May and, and, and I'd see little things in his game and I'd say like, oh, he's not there yet. And then I watch in July and I'd be like, oh, he's not there yet. August, he's not there yet. September, October, November, he's not there yet. And then December, I don't know what happened, but I think he's arrived at his, <laughs> uh, his former level. And recently in January, February, like 2021, I've been watching his stream and it's been really impressive, Tristan. Like the gameplay has up to the next level for him. I expect big things. I think he's going to make it out of the first round as long as he doesn't get one of those, you know, top, top guys. I, th I think he'll at least get to the second round here in Hidden Cup 3 or 4. Sorry. This is something that comes to mind about Jordan. He would get leads and then struggle a little bit with transitions. Doubt was casting with me and he was like making fun of Jordan because Jordan was making a few camels without upgrades. Like those are the things, his decision making's there. It's in the transitional period 
in like the mid game where he can be a little slow to to make the proper decisions. But like every other aspect of his game seems great. Mm -hmm. uh, he had some amazing highlights, amazing split micro, everything that you'd want from a player in the qualifier. And it wasn't like there was any question of Jordan's level after the qualifier, Dave, because he had to go through Capoch. Capoch has been a beast and also trying to make it back. And then he had to go through the max. And the max is a Hidden Cup legend in my book. Like after Hidden Cup 2, almost beating Viper in the finals, everything that he pulled out. I mean, you beat Capoch, you beat the max, and then you beat the max the way you did, 4-2, to make it into the Hidden Cup. And you, you've got to know if you're Jordan that you deserve to be amongst those top 16. The only reason I, I wouldn't want to see... Now, I do want to see Jordan go through. The only reason I wouldn't want him just to go through is because his style is very, like, general. Yeah, There's true. nothing we can pick out for it, right? So as a caster, I'm kind of looking at him, and I'm going to be guessing 15 names <laughs> <laughs> when I'm watching his play style because there, yeah. I don't think there's anything really super unique against it, uh, or about it. It's just solid. Well, there was something that we were able to pick up on Hidden Cup 2, because he did play in Hidden Cup 2. Now, he got 3-0'd in the first round, I think, by MBL. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. But Jordan said, I think I know who you are, but it was perfect punctuation. <laughs> yeah, oh, no was, other player would do that. No other player would use perfect punctuation and say that. And we're like, okay, that's got to be Jordan. It was, like, super nice. <laughs> It was perfect punctuation. Turns out it was actually him. So uh, even though, holy moly, Zilzil. Wow. We're just talking here, Zilzil. Slow it down. Thank you. Um, actually, Dave, I, I was wrong. It was the Max that had 3-0'd him in Hidden Cup 2. How fitting is that? How fitting that Jordan got 3-0'd by Max in Hidden Cup 2, and then he shows up to Hidden Cup 4 qualifier and has to beat the Max to get in. That's a cool story for Jordan. If we talked about every storyline around this tournament, we'd be here till like April, though. True. That's true. That's true. But I have high hopes for Jordan. I just think the level's so high, man. Like, we could only eight players can go on to round two. And I would say about like 13 could move on to round two <laughs> based on their names and quality. So um, I don't know if you had anything else to bring up with the players, Dave, but certainly a lot of conversation to be had around the community over the next couple of days of what people expect. Dark Horse, who is your Dark Horse for this tournament? Poof. You know, I can't help but think back to that quarterfinal between Princess Yodit and Katyan Khan. And Princess Yodit had a lead in a game, ended yep. up losing the game, and then losing the best of five. That Princess was doubt. And remember, like, Hera was doing so well. He was arguably peak Hera in Hidden Cup 3. Of course, you know, if Dow ended up making the semis, he would have been up against Tato. You never know what's going to happen there. But I feel like Dow was so disappointed in himself because he feels like he should have beat Hera in that quarter, quarterfinal. Um, and then Dow was, for lack of a better word, doubted in a recent tournament, Red Bull Wololo, which is faster paced, Dave, and he won it against Leary. So, like, we... we then about 20 minutes talking about Viper and Hera and Leary and even brought up Yo in the conversation. But when we're talking prep, I think, I think Doubt's got to be in that conversation. And it really, it wouldn't hugely surprise me if he makes it to the semis or maybe even the finals if he is able to get good strats down. That's how crazy this player is. Yeah, but if he, if he wins, then he's going to blast us in the interview again. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, that's true. But for the sake of a of a good tournament, I, I'd be okay with that. Um, I'm just <laughs> I don't say doubts my favorite to make to the semis or the finals, but it, he's the type of player where if he can get the strategy right and like everything starts clicking and people get surprised in this format, mm -hmm. I think he can get an extra win or two per series with good prep and maybe he's my dark horse. Like if we're, we're saying someone other than the names we brought up before, probably doubt for me. Yeah, someone outside like the top five or six players. I think my dark horse. I I want to say Winchester, but like I already consider him like type top five or six here. Okay. If I'm looking at this list, like I that's how highly I rate him. So he's not even a dark horse for me. I would say ACCM. He has Ooh. taken his game to the next level. Um, we saw him in Red Bull Wololo three, an amazing performance there. We've seen him uh, get great results against players. 
um, that would normally be considered, you know, ranks above um, where he is. So I think ACCM is someone to look out for, and he's going to be harder to spot for us now uh, this time around because his play style used to be super unique yeah. uh, with forwards and towers and whatnot, but he has taken his game to another level. And he's kind of leveled the playing field uh, with the top guys. And I think that he's going to make it through to at least the second round, if not the semifinals. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I don't know what his preparation's like behind the scenes. But all I know is that after hearing interviews with him, his mindset is on point, man. Like, yep. I asked him what changed, and he's like, it was so cute, man. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I just thought, you can play better than this. You can do better. He was pumping himself up, man. And... uh I remember afterwards, he was like, thank you to Vietnam. You know, he's happy to have so many fans around the world, but of course in Vietnam too. So I could definitely see ACCM doing well. And it's also, really like, like, how can you not like the guy That too. at the same time, right? Yep. Like he's, oh my God, you watch his stream, you hear his interviews. It just seems like such a great guy. Yeah, he's a player you want to root for, right? And considering how much work he's put into his game, he's a player that you want to participate in a hidden cup because it relies on that preparation. So he suits it perfectly. Well, um, there's a lot of players there, and I feel like we could continue to talk about them. Um, but I want to go back. I want to circle back to the Viper, Dave. And I'm just going to ask you a simple question. Does the Viper win Hidden Cup 4? Uh, I have, in my mental calculations for this tournament, I heard Nilly give him a 23.5% or some really <laughs> specific number earlier today. I'm going to give Viper a 36.7% chance of winning this tournament. What is wrong? I, I, why do you guys have to make this so complicated? What was it? I got to write this down. 36 what? 0.7. Okay. Yeah. Nilly gave Viper 23.7. So... He he gives Viper less of a shot. Nilly said, Viper at twenty three point seven percent, Leary at twenty point six percent, Hera at nineteen point five percent, Yo at ten point three percent, and the rest at twenty five point nine percent. So, mm -hmm. you know, the regardless of how ridiculous these percentages are, I think everyone will recognize if they were around for Hidden Cup three, that this is very low <laughs> compared to previous years, right? Like a lot of people were probably looking at 60, 70, 75%, maybe thinking Viper would have to have a bad day to lose. Now, I think people are recognizing just how high that level is. Um, Dave, I, I alluded to it earlier. I think that the snake is a little, not angry. I think, hungry. I think he's hungry, dude. He just, he, Viper, you know Viper's real quiet guy, real modest guy. Of course, deep down inside, believes in his ability. But, guys, as a streamer, as a content creator, you see the comments everywhere on Reddit and AOE Zone. Yep. You see the people who are like, oh, Viper's going to lose 4-0 to Yo again. You see that stuff. And you've got to, especially someone who's been as successful as Viper, he's going to use that to motivate himself, right? Like, if no one's talking smack, if no one's saying that, that someone's better than him, he, he doesn't really have as much motivation there. But I think that he's going to have some motivation there. And so I guess I'm supposed to give a percentage now. I, I'm going to go, and this is weird because all the previous Hidden Cups, I was always looking for a reason to say that Viper was going to lose because I wanted there to be a reason <laughs> when there wasn't. This time, while I do accept that I think it's going to be tougher for Viper, I'm still going to give him like something like 40% here because I really only think there's one or two players on that list that could maybe give him big, big problems. But... uh I'm excited, Dave. Like, even with the predictability of the winner, the previous Hidden Cups, it was so fun. Hidden Cup 3, we didn't even know for sure, you or I anyways, that it was Viper till maybe the first game of the finals. Well, he was playing, like, crazy. he was playing not his style. And I don't care if you're in the YouTube comments going, I knew it was Viper all <laughs> along, because there is that guy. I've seen that guy. He's... <laughs> Every single YouTube video from Hidden Cup 3 is like, I knew exactly who these players were. Okay, buddy. The that's stats, fine. The, by, the, well, by the way, viewers, the stats do not reflect that. Like, there's, there's competition 
where people can can guess and you can only put one name for each hero the stats do not reflect the amount of people who quote unquote knew <laughs> so uh i'm with you on that one dave but <clears throat> even the players themselves uh kind of had a difficult time guessing who they were up against I'll have all these statistics during the main event, but uh, the big one for me against the semifinals, Kato was facing Hera, thought he was facing Hera. Viper was facing Dogao, thought he was facing Hera. Dogao was facing Viper, and Dogao said he was facing Hera. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> according to the player guesses, because now they have to submit a guess after they play their sets, there, there were three Heras in that semifinal in Hidden Cup 3, so... <laughs> It's, it's crazy. So um, let's move on to expectations here, Dave. Let's talk a little bit more about expectations from the level because I've had two days over the last year which where I've said that the level was probably as high as I've ever experienced. Uh, the most recent day was that one day a Red Bull wall low. You were there with me for a lot of that. Different settings, of course, but that was crazy. And then I remember the quarterfinal day from Hidden Cup 3 – 12 hours of games, every single quarterfinal was just the level of of your dreams, right? So do you think, well, what do you think as far as the level that these players are going to bring? Because the, the stakes are higher than ever, the prize pool is higher than ever, there's more viewers than ever. I think we're going to have a bunch of long days. Yeah. <laughs> I think all of these sets, like, we're not going to see many... 3-0s or, or 4-0s or whatnot. I think we're going to see a lot of competitive sets here, Tristan. And yep. that is a testament to how the level has grown since DE came out. Yep. Hidden Cup 3 was a couple months after DE came out. So players, I mean, the level was rising because they were super active. But we've had a year since then. And historically, for anyone who's not familiar in the Age of Empires scene, probably from like, you know since Vubli was around till 2017, 2018, we'd only have five or six pros active on the ladder at any given point. Right? Oh, yeah. Or active in tournaments. Like, yep. we'd, we'd be limited to that. Now, in 2020, 2021, since the E came out, we've had 50, 40, 50, 60, 70, like, really high-level players all active at the same time, all testing themselves against each other and all raising each other's level. Mm -hmm. And Hidden Cup 4 is going to be an even higher level than we've seen in King of the Desert 3, in Red Bull Wallalo 3. It's going to be insane. I'm looking at round one. So the, way, the way this is streamed is you have round one uh, on Thursday and Friday, and it's four best of fives a day. First day was 3-0-3-1-3-1-3-1. Second day was 3-0-3-2-3-0-3-0. I'm with you. I think that there's going to be a lot less 3-0s uh, in the first round. And then remember the quarters last year, every set of those four best of fives was 3-2 except for one, which was 3-1. And I think the level's going to be insane, dude. I think the strategy, like, no longer do we go into, like, most of the maps knowing what the strats are going to be. I think with... The sieves, it's going to be different because with sieve drafts, you get forced into using some sieves in some weird spots, whereas before in Hidden Cups, you'd kind of know what was going to be picked. Um, yeah, I, I don't have anything more to say except expect the highest level and probably best Hidden Cup ever. I know it's really easy for me to say that to you guys and like try and hype it up even if I don't believe it, chat uh, and, and viewers on YouTube, but all the stars are aligned for this to be way better in every aspect. I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. And normally I, I tell you to bring your moms to help the viewer count, but I want everyone to bring their entire family out to the event this time, okay? Can we make this like a family reunion for everyone in Twitch chat? Can we get can we get to like 60, 70, 80k? Imagine a world where Tristan has to shave his head for 100k. We could be brothers, me and him. <laughs> he he could be one of us. Imagine. Do it to bring Dave and I closer, chat. <laughs> No, honestly, I, if you guys, I'm okay with big viewership, but if we could just stay away from five figures, that'd be great. Let's just go for 99999 Are you going to live stream it when you shave your head? Yeah, but not the same day. Not like right after. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Um, girlfriend's not too happy that I, I said that. And I'm like, I keep telling her it's not possible. It's just not possible to hit those numbers. But I want to talk about that. People have been asking me a lot about 
expectations when it comes to viewer numbers, uh, yada, yada. So here's the deal, chat. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so before Hidden Cup 3, I remember the qualifier was getting something like seven or 8,000 max for decider sets, which was huge. Um, and the feeling was that the goal of 50,000 viewers wasn't going to be possible. Um, and I had said three months before that I really felt like it, it could be. And that was my motivating goal there, Dave. It was like, I need to inform people on YouTube, inform people wherever I can, get the energy out there. Of course, you helped with that too. And of course, COVID happened. It definitely had the assist. There's no real way of knowing what viewership would have been like if the world hadn't changed the way it did. But 53, 54,000 was what was accomplished on that day, uh, which was just crazy memory for me. And it's almost like, you know how earlier I was saying that Viper was winning all those tournaments and then people right now were saying that Viper might not win Hidden Cup and he would use that as a motivation to do another one? That, like, it's almost like that Michael Jordan meme and then I took it personal. <laughs> <laughs> what what people have been saying and like sponsors have been saying behind the scenes when I'm trying to get sponsorship that the viewership from Hidden Cup 3 was largely due to COVID. I'm like, I'm so motivated and I've just been working my ass off because I know that the Age of Empires community can rally like no other and we could show everyone that this is this is a thing that's attainable. Not 100,000, but my goal is just to repeat Hidden Cup 3 as far as viewership. I think it's going to be tough to do, Dave. Um, and so... I, I think like the, the absolute peak in a dream scenario is sixty thousand viewers. Like in a dream scenario, I think maybe Wait, the final what? day. You, you're not gonna hit me with the ninety nine point nine k. That's great. That's, that should be that should be your dream scenario. I, well, yeah, that's a big that's a big viewer number, and you don't have to go bald. Plus, movable thirty five said, "Don't shave your head, T ninety. I don't think you will look the same." which is just oh, a great, really <laughs> great comment there that's just a great take there movable thank you yeah that's you know that's that's okay thank you um i mean dream scenario is 150,000 dream scenario is 5 million dream scenario bill gates gives 5,000 subs to the channel every hour you know like i realist yeah i guess i see your point <laughs> yeah I realistic see your point. goals are important i think i think um Anything above the previous Hidden Cup 3 finals is Gotta be a success. Cool. Yeah. Because that was, everyone was, you know, at home or off work or whatever. And it just, the whole event kind of snowballed towards that finals. But Tristan, if we're talking about viewership, the finals was 4-0. And we hit that in the fourth game, the 55K or whatever. Yeah. Imagine if that finals had gone to seven games. Yeah. It's it's viewership is a tough thing, guys, because it's impossible to know who's going to show up on the day, which is why you're watching on YouTube. Like you might think you're just one person, but if a lot of those people show up and, and make it to their first live stream or first Hidden Cup live, it, it does contribute to to the records. Um, you know, I the big thing for me is I just want to make sure that me and my team, we put in the work behind the scenes. We prepare the content. Uh, we know the players are going to deliver. Right, the the levels there, so um, I'm honestly like as far as expectations with viewership goes, I would just I would just love to have a, around the same climate that we had at Hidden Cup three, and then mm -hmm. the rest is gravy as I say. It feels really weird, Dave, to just say like, as long as it's what it was last year, which is so high. I I think it, I it's think weird, you but... just have to say as long as you're providing the highest quality content you can. Yeah, that's all you can control. Yeah, exactly. I, I do we will do what we can, and uh, viewers, you do what you can to support it. But but um, I think last time we talked about like a sub goal thing as well, Dave. And again, I'm just I feel like I'm in this constant spot with these these viewers, man. I can't even talk about a goal for that because right now we're looking at nine thousand, and the event hasn't even started. So, like I would have said, ten thousand subs. That's ten thousand dollars extra into the prize pool. Um, that seems realistic now, <laughs> um, considering where we are, where we are. So I almost feel like I feel super spoiled by the viewers out there going to show up. So let's just say a number and let's say 15,000 Twitch subs at the end, which would, uh, take that prize pool much higher. And actually, um, I, I have to sort out the details yet, but I believe 
due to an anonymous donor, the prize pool will also be even higher before the subs contribute date. So it could have a pretty freaking sick prize pool for the players. Also, I just have to bring up anyone um, from YouTube or people who watch YouTube. Tristan is almost at 100 million total views on his YouTube channel. You were you actually just passed 99 million 696 696, Ooh. which would have been a great great number for the memes. Ooh, that's a lot, man. That's a lot of people watching age. Yeah, I, we're, I feel spoiled chat. But just spoil me for four days more, March 18th through the 21st, okay? Um, now, on the day, we are going to have uh, some crazy things when it comes to guessing this year. It's going to be different. I'll explain it on the day. But you guys can submit your guesses for the players. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have various competitions. It's going to be super fun. And uh, make sure you can make it there. I really don't want to spoil too much. You're just going to have to make it. I'm not sure how to close out this talk show, except for saying I'm, I'm really hyped, Dave. You and I are going to be there um on saturday sunday just the whole way through just like previous years um i'm gonna have dash joining dash of course known for his analysis everywhere but league of legends notably and uh we're gonna have neely here slam here everything it's gonna be a crazy four days and uh i just have to state for the record that the map is called pants and not bay what have you done <laughs> <laughs> what have you there's, done <laughs> let me see there's pants pokeball railroad tracks um what are the what are the other ones hmm. okay i want to bring this up because i feel underappreciated i was just saying about how chat has been so supportive of me and, and all that and that's true but when i was casting with leary i asked leary if it looked like pants and he was like he's like no nah, these aren't pants he's like they're too wide and i immediately retorted with yeah these are your mom's pants which I felt like was an amazing, witty mom joke. And like three no. people in Twitch chat laughed. If Dave would have made that joke, thousands of people would have been losing it's, it. It's about intonation. It's not about the joke itself. It's about the timing and the tone of your voice. You'll learn these things. Just stick around All right. a while longer. I'll, I'll, we've, we had a good start, Tristan, but uh, I just got to, you know, can we do your sense of humor a little bit. Yeah, can we do a training session? before like the main event like maybe wednesday do a training session with jokes uh we've had a couple of years now if you're not getting it by now <laughs> then we're gonna need hey we're gonna need more time maybe maybe the more hair you have the less humor you have so if we hit a hundred thousand viewers and i shave my head suddenly i've got dave level of jokes potentially but probably not oh okay all right that was some good intonation there dave very good very good joke all right viewers thank you all Again, YouTube, we'd love to have you. Of course, it's all going to be on YouTube at some point as well. I know you guys have got crazy lives. I know you might not be able to make it, and that's fair. So, uh, you know, I also feel a little bad because I'm not the type of YouTuber to constantly be like, check this out, blah, blah, blah. But I do that a lot with Hidden Cup, so I suppose apologies. But if you are if you made it this far in the talk show, you're probably all about it. Um, looking forward to seeing who's going to who's gonna break through and surprise in Hidden Cup. Looking forward to all the memes and the jokes and the laughs. And uh, we'll see what happens March 18th through the 21st. It'll be a pretty wild time.